Hey all, Len Kirshner here. So I'm outside Federal District Court here in Washington, D.C. I've been attending the Oath Keepers seditious conspiracy trial. And as I watch what unfolds inside that courtroom, I am reminded of one thing. Every day, Donald Trump's foot soldiers, the people he ordered to attack the Capitol, are being indicted, they're being tried, they're being convicted. Many of them are being imprisoned. And Donald Trump is still out there playing golf. So for this legal recap video, all I wanna say is the month of October started with Donald Trump not being held accountable for any of his crimes. And the month of October ended with Donald Trump not being held accountable for any of his crimes. And after the midterms, that's gotta change. Here is a short recap of the legal stories for the month that was October 2022. So let's talk about women's rights in the context of what's going on in Iran right now and what's going on in the U.S. Because women's rights, human rights, basic rights, like justice, matters. So day one of the Oath Keepers trial is in the books. I sat through opening statements today and based on what I saw, and based on what I heard, it really does look like Elmer Stewart Rhodes, the head of the Oath Keepers, and his co-defendants are gonna go through some things. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. So two new stories broke, friends, both involving Donald Trump trying to get away with his classified documents crimes. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So did you see Donald Trump's latest post, his obscene post, his vulgar post, his dangerous post about Mitch McConnell and his wife? You know, that post raises one question and it's not a question about Donald Trump. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So I spent another day today inside Federal District Court in Washington, D.C., watching the prosecution of five members of the Oath Keepers organization who are charged with seditious conspiracy, essentially conspiring to violently overthrow the United States government. And today, three former Oath Keepers testified. And somehow, I ended up feeling a little bit more hopeful and a little bit more optimistic after listening to the testimony of three former Oath Keepers. And I'd like to talk about why that is. So if you'll stick with me for a few minutes, I'd, I'd like to talk about that. Because justice matters. So now we've learned that Donald Trump's criminal conduct vis-a-vis -vis classified documents is ongoing. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Well, friends, we now have even more information about Donald Trump's theft of government documents. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So let's take a break from the daily deluge of Donald's classified documents crimes, and let's turn our attention to the ongoing legal tantrum being thrown by Senator Lindsey Graham in his desperate bid to keep from having to testify about the Georgia state election crimes of Donald Trump. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So these days, MAGA no longer seems to stand for Make America Great Again. What does it stand for now? Well, as some really clever person came up with, now MAGA seems to stand for 
making attorneys get attorneys. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So DOJ just filed its brief in the Supreme Court in the case involving the battle over the classified documents that the FBI seized from Mar-a-Lago. And the brief looks like a laydown winner if the Supreme Court justices are honest brokers of the law. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So newly disclosed evidence proves Donald Trump committed the crime of obstruction of justice. So I have just three words, time to indict. Okay, maybe three more words because justice matters. So friends, what we saw at today's January 6th committee hearing was proof. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt that Donald Trump committed multiple felony crimes in his determination to unconstitutionally retain the power of the presidency. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So after being subpoenaed by the January 6th committee to testify, Donald Trump launches a letter into the public square, a letter that is sharply self-incriminating. Let's talk about that because justice matters. All right, friends, let's do Donald Trump's very bad day in just three headlines because justice matters. So now that the January 6th committee has subpoenaed Donald Trump to testify about the insurrection, what happens if Donald Trump defies the subpoena? Well, today, a member of the J6 committee answered that question. And his answer might surprise you. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So friends, as of this coming Friday, it looks like Steve Bannon will be going to prison. And that represents at least a little bit of justice. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So friends, with today's verdict in a federal courtroom in Virginia, we may have found an actual witch hunt. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So a federal judge just found, just ruled expressly and directly that Donald Trump signed under the penalties of perjury, a court document, a court document that he knew contained false allegations of election fraud. And yes, that's a crime. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So friends, there's new reporting out saying that DOJ prosecutors see enough evidence to charge Donald Trump with obstruction of justice. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So the rule of law took a direct hit today from Trump appointed judge Carl Nichols in the Steve Bannon case. Let's talk about that because justice matters. So Donald Trump has been subpoenaed by the January 6th committee. Let's take on two issues, one involving form and the other involving substance because justice matters. So which of Donald Trump's many crimes might be the first one to be indicted by the Department of Justice? Let's talk about that because justice matters. So you've probably heard there's a trial kicking off in New York today involving the Trump Organization, involving Donald Trump's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, but not involving Donald Trump himself. Let's talk about this show trial, shall we? Because justice matters. So let's talk about Clarence and Ginny, Donald and Lindsay, and their 
entangled treasonous web of crime, conflict, and cover-up on display for all the world to see. Because justice matters. So friends, what do we do? What should we do? When a judge lies to the Senate under oath at his confirmation hearing, in his desperate bid to be confirmed to the Supreme Court so he could revoke women's constitutional privacy rights. What should we do? Let's talk about that because justice matters. So friends, what are we to make of the constant reporting about how the Department of Justice's investigation is ratcheting up how the circle is tightening, how the DOJ is closing in on Donald Trump and his criminal associates. You know, I have a thought, a perspective on where we stand right now on the investigative front, and it's a perspective that is informed by my career as a prosecutor. So with your kind indulgence, I'd like to talk about it for a few minutes because justice matters. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, was attacked in the Pelosi family home last night. What do we know about the incident thus far? And how should our federal government respond to this horrific crime? Let's talk about that because justice matters. So it looks like a new prosecutor has been added to the team of federal prosecutors investigating the crimes of Donald Trump. What should our takeaway be from this new staffing move? You know, what, if anything, does this new data point tell us? Let's talk about that because justice matters. So friends, let's talk about today's testimony by U.S. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn at the Oath Keepers Seditious Conspiracy Trial. And then let's also talk about the latest regarding Donald Trump's tax returns. So, yep, we're gonna talk about heroes and zeros because justice matters. Justice matters, matters, it matters.